people. So that's the thing that's interesting about tonight's selection is that if if you are interested to watch Silent Rage, if you if you find this interesting after we talk about it, um, you can actually go and actually watch it on Tubi. And then uh, uh, Jane actually says, I watch shows on Tubi almost every day, which is very cool. Very cool. Like I said, for me, my first experience with Tubi, and it was a very good one. Um, so um, this is a rogues retrospective. So you may be asking yourself, if you're new to the show, well, what does that mean, Dave? Well, what a rogues retrospective means is that we're going to talk about the film the way we originally first heard it, our impressions when we originally saw it, and then what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how we feel about the film today in a more contemporary, modern uh, sort of context. That's what makes it a retrospective. We talk about it then, and then we talk about it today. Now, um, one of the things I want to point out here just real quick before I get into the basic information and read a quick synopsis is that I love what it says in this movie poster because it says, science created him. Now, Chuck Norris <laughs> must destroy him. And I love the fact that it's not even his character's name. It's Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris must destroy him. So, Yeah, it's like a uh, Chuck Norris joke before Chuck Norris jokes even existed. I know, isn't it? It's crazy. It's awesome, right? isn't it? I love it. I love it. I, and I didn't uh, know about that tagline until until you sent me the show graphics. And then I was like, oh, my God, that's like so that's such a Chuck Norris joke before they had Chuck Norris jokes. Right. And it's so funny because I'm surprised I haven't seen this poster around more often because that's what it is. It's it's <laughs> foreshadowing the legend that would become Chuck Norris. So um, so Silent Rage, of course, is a film that came out in 1982. It's considered a action slash horror film which um, we're going to talk about that because that's kind of the good point about it and sometimes the not so good point about this film, at least for my personal opinion. So just real quickly, um, it just uh, the synopsis is, a sheriff kills a murderer whose body is then donated to science. Three, doctor, three doctors operate on the body using a revolutionary drug that not only brings the criminal back to life, but also gives him superhuman powers. When the resurrected man begins to kill again, the sheriff faces the difficult task of hunting him down. Again, this came out in 1982. Um, this is directed by uh, Michael Miller. And um, the, um, yeah, obviously it stars, our big star here is going to be obviously Chuck Norris. Ron Silver was in this movie. It's been a little while since I've seen Silent Rage. I used to really talk this film up among people who like B-movies and stuff. And I had forgotten all about that Ron Silver was actually in this movie. I think this is an early film for him, too. Stephen Keats is in it, uh, Tony Kellum. Um, and uh, uh, I think, uh, I can't remember the name of the actor who actually plays the killer, John Kirby. But um, this is an interesting film. So uh, let's start off with you, Eric, since I was doing oh, this. Oh, wait, uh, talking about the cast, uh, Stephen oh. First. Uh, I have to talk oh. about him. Uh, because a lot of people, I didn't even realize this uh, as I was watching the movie until later, as I was doing research uh, for the program, uh, I didn't realize that this is the person that was in Babylon 5, who played um, uh, uh, Veer, uh, the, basically the, the ambassadorial aide on Babylon 5. And a lot of people might not have made that connection. In fact, I confused him with another actor initially when I saw this. And so I just wanted to mention that because he has actually passed uh, since then, he passed in 2017. So I just thought I'd mention that for Babylon 5 fans that uh, he's in this movie and actually has a very prominent role in it. Well, very cool. Um, so um, let's start with you, Eric. How did you first hear about Silent Rage? So it's kind of it's kind of weird because I don't remember hearing about Silent Rage at all uh, when it actually came out. Uh, I don't remember this film being on my radar at all. Um, I had heard of Chuck Norris. I knew who Chuck Norris was, and I'm trying to think if, if uh, what context it was that I knew him from because I don't remember seeing any of his movies growing up as a kid. Um, I mentioned in a previous program, I saw the film Sidekicks, uh, and that film didn't come out until much later. Um, so I, I don't even know how I knew of Chuck Norris. I just did. I guess that's part of the legend of Chuck Norris. It's like, I hadn't even seen it. Oh, you know what? It was probably Delta Force. Now that I think about it, Delta Force was probably what introduced me to Chuck Norris, um, which came, came later. And so I, I when this film came out, it really wasn't in my radar. 
I hadn't really heard of it or anything like that for years and years and years as, as a kid, as a teenager. And then it wasn't until much later that I just saw it when it was on TV one night. Uh, and that was fairly recently within the last couple of years. It happened to be on TV. Uh, there's a lot of those digital sub channels out there. I talk about some of them like Heroes and Icons, Comet. And by the way, it wasn't on either one of those. It was on some other weird digital sub channel that I happened to be passing by. So it was fairly recently that I saw this and I saw it on television. So it was highly, highly edited. Well, that's interesting. Uh, so the way that I, uh, now I knew about Chuck Norris because I had actually seen, uh, I had some friends who were big Bruce Lee fans. And so we would watch a lot of things like, you know, the big boss, um, we had obviously, you know, I'd seen, um, Enter the Dragon, a lot of the different Bruce Lee films. So the first time I actually saw Chuck Norris in anything was actually when, um, he actually fought Bruce Lee, right. Which is a, a very classic, you know, sort of martial arts, um, scene action scene. Um, I, I'll be honest, I can't remember the name of the film that it's actually from, which is kind of bad because I should be able to remember that, but it, it doesn't come to me off the top of my head. So I kind of knew who Chuck Norris was, and I had seen a lot of his other um, films uh, prior to Silent Rage. Like I had seen Octagon, um, and um, but the way that I found Silent Rage was the way I found a lot of these horror movies um, in the uh, basically uh, in in the late '80s, kind of early '90s. So. Um, Silent Rage was just on late one night. Um, it's the same way that I saw Fright Night. Um, the first time I saw Fright Night, which if you go back and actually listen to the audio shows, I talk about Fright Night. Fright Night is one of my favorite, if not maybe my favorite horror film. Um, it's up there with Halloween as, as like, just for me, like one of the most important uh, horror films for me personally I've ever seen. Um, but the way I saw Silent Rage was the same way I was first introduced to Fright Night. They used to show these kind of movies really, really late at night, and I would be up drawing or whatever, and then these films would just come on. So Silent Rage just came on television, um, and that was the first time that I had seen it. And I remembered watching it at first, and it just looked like your stereotypical slasher kind of a movie, right? Um, and then Chuck Norris shows up. That's why I picked this image actually for the graphic because it was so weird. I'll never forget the first time I saw this movie because it looks like it's just a straightforward slasher movie and then the cops show up and then Chuck Norris gets out of the car. I'm like, Chuck Norris? Chuck Norris is in this? What, what movie is this? So um, that's when I really kind of set everything aside and started totally focusing on this movie because I was like, it, it's, it's like Chuck Norris is going to take out the slasher guy. And it is so crazy because at the beginning of the movie, as the synopsis actually says, Chuck Norris, I mean, the guy pretty much dies at the beginning of the of the movie. And it's just like, wow, that's crazy, right? Um, so basically, I had never heard about Silent Rage. And just in the same way that I learned about Fright Night, it was the same thing. It just happened to be on one night late, late, late at night on television. And um, I was just terribly intrigued by it and uh, quite... Uh, quite enjoyed it uh, back in the day. I was completely surprised by how taken I was with the film because um, it's a weird mixture of elements. Um, it's not something I would typically think of as the way to put something together. Um, and because you basically, it, it's just as the, the movie poster says, science created him, now Chuck Norris must destroy him. That's basically kind of what this film is to an extent. It is sort of like, Chuck Norris versus Michael Myers, for lack of a better way to put it. Would you agree with that, Eric? I love that. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought uh, watching it uh, today. I watched it earlier today. Uh, I, it's exactly what I thought of. It's it's like Chuck Norris versus Michael Myers. It's, it's a really good way to put it. If you haven't seen it, that's what you're going to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and it's as strange as you're probably thinking. And with, with a little bit of reanimator thrown in, I thought. I feel like I had little sprinklings of reanimator, you know, kind of in there too, especially with the scientists who who basically create the killer. Um, that's what it reminded me. I thought of me Frankenstein. Of. I think there's a lot of Frankenstein. I, yeah, it it does have a lot of Frankenstein, but I just think that to me, 
when you look at the banter between the two guys, I feel like that they were kind of pulling and looking more for from like taking inspiration for Reanimator because that's what it made me think of. And it's so funny because I wonder if Reanimator even existed when this movie was made. But that's what it reminded me of. Yeah, you know, I just just felt like you know Jeffrey Combs and his assistant guy, you know, doing this stuff, you know, and they bring this guy back from the dead. And what's interesting too is not only do they bring the guy back from the dead, but they make him almost invincible. So they give you like sort of like a a supervillain origin that explains why our Michael Myers killer basically is so difficult to stop is because, you know, basically, you know, he is, you know, for lack of a better term, I mean, he is, you know, superhuman by the time that they're done with him. So it it's it's a very interesting weird mixture of elements. I remember seeing it uh, late at night uh, back in the day, I completely loved it. As soon as I could go out and buy a copy of this on VHS and then eventually on DVD, I did. Um, and it's funny because I don't currently own it because I think I actually loaned this movie to someone and they would, they just basically never gave it back to me. Um, so we do have a couple comments. I want to recognize this real quick. Bobby Chambers says sold. Um, yeah, the pitch for this movie is pretty strong, um, but we're going to get into specifics here because there are some issues. Um, and then my uh, Jane actually says, I have a Chuck Norris bobblehead to protect me. Well, that's cool. So um, I have um, all kinds of weird bobbleheads now since I've been collecting Funko Pops, which I should update everyone on that at some point. Um, so we've talked about how we first heard about the film. And then Eric, did when you originally saw it back in the day, did you enjoy it? Like I said, I, I actually only saw it, the first time I saw it was within the last couple of years. It was pretty recent. Oh, okay, okay. So it's and, recent. And like okay. you, it was on television, but I hadn't even heard of this movie uh, prior to that. Uh, and it was funny when you were talking about, because I was talking about earlier, like I'm trying to remember what how it is that I even knew who Chuck Norris was back when I was a little kid. And uh, I do remember my dad talking about the fight with Bruce Lee. I do remember that. That's probably my first exposure was my dad just talking about that because I knew who Bruce Lee was. And then my dad used to talk about the infamous uh, fight between Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris. Of course, there's all that speculation of who would have won in a real fight. Right, right. So, um, well, the thing that's interesting about this film is it has those shades, uh, even though this is not, obviously this is not Walker, Texas Ranger, but it has shades of that in terms of how the way that Chuck comes across, the way that he's dressed, it leans into that pretty heavy. Um, so hold on just a second. Um, Eric, why don't you talk about how you feel about the film today real quick, if that's okay. Yeah. Uh, so I actually really enjoyed uh, watching this. I actually did watch it again today, and I watched it on Tubi. And the Tubi version is unedited. Uh, so it's basically the full you know, R rated version of the film. And, you know, we don't talk about a lot of horror films on this show. And uh, probably one of the reasons for that is that I'm not necessarily a huge horror fan myself. Um, I did grow up watching things like uh, the Halloween movies, um, the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movies, a couple of the Friday 13th. I saw them actually at a friend's house because my parents would not let me watch those kind of things when I was growing up. So it was like a little bit later, probably around fifth, sixth grade. I specifically had a friend that I met. I used to go over to his house, spend the night, and he was really into horror movies. And that was like my first introduction to horror movies. And those were the kind of movies that I watched. And those are the kind of horror movies that to this day I still like. A lot of the new horror stuff I'm just not that into. I like that old, that old stuff, like I said, like Nightmare on Elm Street. Halloween and um, you know Friday the Thirteenth, and this film really uh, fits very well into those kind of horror films, in my opinion. Um, so I really enjoyed watching it. I like the fact that this is a genre buster. Uh, I like multi multi genre films. This is obviously a horror film, uh, but this is also an action film, very much so. Has a lot of action staples. Uh, there's a great bar fight scene. Uh, where basically, uh, I mean, it, it's kind of funny because it's almost like a mini movie within the movie. It doesn't really fit into the rest of the movie. It's just Chuck Norris being the, the town sheriff and beating up a bunch of bikers in a bar. It's it's awesome. It's exactly the kind of thing you want if you're into Chuck Norris, if you're into martial arts scenes, that kind of stuff. And it's just kind of in the middle of this film. 
So it's very much an action film, uh, but it's also very much a sci-fi film. Uh, it's not supernatural uh, that creates the monster. It is science. That's why I was kind of saying, like, it reminds me a lot of Frankenstein. Um, in fact, I think that was uh, something the director had said in my research was that this was like uh, Frankenstein meets Kung Fu. That's what the director called it. And I'm not sure if that's how he pitched it, or, or but that's how he advertised it was. This is Frankenstein meets Kung Fu. Of course, it's actually karate because Chuck Norris does karate, but the director probably didn't know the difference. Uh, regardless, I think it's really interesting. It's, it's a fun movie. Um, like I said, it's, it's, it's a genre buster. It's, it's kind of got multiple dimensions going for it in terms of the kind of film that it is. I mean, again, being, not being like a huge horror fan, um, it, it works really well for me on that level. And I really, 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 uh, did enjoy watching it. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, and, um, I, I don't know. I just, I don't know what else to say about it other than I really enjoyed it. Uh, you know, one of the big reasons that we're reviewing this is because it is October. Uh, you know, this is the month where you want to be talking about things that are, you know, horror related, things that are um, things that are going to freak you out, things that are spooky. Um, and I think Silent Rage kind of uh, really fits the bill. There's a ton, a ton of just of your typical horror staples uh, in this movie. You know, everything from, you know, just the kind of stupid things some of the victims do. Uh, the running upstairs thing that happens in this movie uh, where the victim, of course, runs upstairs instead of running out the door. Uh, there is nudity, which, of course, that's a big thing in a lot of those those uh, horror movies of that era. Um, so there, it's got a lot going for it, it. You know, and of course, it's got Chuck Norris. I mean, <laughs> it's got Chuck Norris fighting in a monster. So, I mean, that's pretty cool, right? I mean, how can you go wrong there? Yeah. So for myself. Um, having just re and literally, I rewatched this like I said within the last couple of days. Um, the the thing about Silent Rage that makes it really interesting if you've never seen it before is is like Sarah Eric said, it is very much a genre buster, and that's the thing that's really cool about it is that it isn't it does it, it's not as predictable as you would think it would be, you know. It is predictable in the sense that, you know, you know, hopefully our hero will win, right? But it's not as predictable as you would expect. That's the thing that's interesting about this film is kind of how surprising it is. It sort of like falls into these like horror movie tropes. But then because of the introduction of Chuck Norris and the martial arts element, it doesn't really go the way you expect it to go. And it's interesting too because um, for a long time, this movie that that bar fight scene that he has eric this used to be the highlight thing that they would play for chuck norris when they would talk about chuck norris when they would do like martial arts and film retrospective things or documentary stuff or whatever that was one of the big scenes that they would play for chuck norris it's actually the bar fight that actually comes from silent rage um that especially yeah, it, that it, it makes a lot of sense i mean that's it, that's a really well done scene if you're an yeah. action fan, you're, I mean, you're going to love that scene. Yeah, and it's it's got a lot. Yeah, you know, it's got the breaking of the pool cue, like all those those things. That eventually, it seems like when you when you get into doing martial arts action movies, it seems like eventually everyone had at least it, well, not now, but at one point, everyone had that go to a bar or you're in a bar scene, you know. And um, of course, Seagal had you know his and um, Out for Justice. Um, you know, um, trying to think of uh, Van Dam. Uh, I think for Van Dam, I think for the one I always think of, which is actually a restaurant, not a bar, is from Universal Soldier. I mean, there are, there's all those really awesome sort of like you know bar type battle scenes. Um, actually, Seagal had several. Now that I think about it, because he also had the bar scene too in uh, on Deadly Ground. But anyhow, I digress. Um, so the um. But that's the thing that's kind of fun about this is how it doesn't really just lean into the horror tropes and then that's it. Um, the how do I feel about the film today? That's where we're that's where we're at. Um, so there's a couple of things because it's been a few years since I've seen this. Um, I had forgotten how much nudity there was in this movie. For starters, <laughs> there, um, is a, there is a lot. There's there's there is a, a lot. lot. 
There's a lot of nudity. In film. So heads up on that end that there is a lot of nudity. Um, the film does show its age at times. That's not necessarily a bad thing because you know from the jump that what you're watching is very much, you know, sort of like a product of his time, right? So I don't think people would be too shocked at that, other than the fact that um, some of the the quote unquote love scenes are are borderline for me personally, kind of cringe worthy at this point. Um, hey, there's a story behind that. Do you know the story behind that? Oh no. So in my research. Uh, there's apparently a quote from uh, the director that says for the love scenes, uh, Chuck Norris was really having a lot of difficulty because he wasn't comfortable with that. And it wasn't something that he, he had experience with. I, I, my understanding is this is the first time he did a love scene in a movie. And so the director to relax him basically said, Hey, why don't you improvise? I guess they went off script and said, just have some fun with it. And they said on set, it was fun. And that they, you know, enjoyed it. Chuck had a good time, uh, you know, playing around with with his co-star and all that stuff. But Chuck Norris himself apparently has said the most criticism he gets from this film is about the love scenes, and as a result, he doesn't do love scenes anymore. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, the, the uh, but here here here's why I find the love scene cringeworthy: the music choice. I feel like the music choices that they made during the love scenes is what makes it so dated. And it's very seventies. So, it's very seventies. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like it's just that's to me what dates the film the most and what makes it its most kind of cringeworthy. Because like some of the early shots in the film, where the way that it's actually shot from a directorial and a cinematography standpoint, it reminds me of like you know. Night of the Living Dead and a lot of these really classic horror films and how that it's shot and it's staged and it's put together. Because um, even though it is you know, a Frankenstein of a film because you're taking two things and smashing them together, um, it, it is still such an interesting... It's just such an interesting way that the film has been put together because of the disparate elements. Because once you kind of get past some of this stuff that kind of doesn't work... And then you, and basically the killer is basically set loose. I mean, it's it's just a fun B, you know, almost like a grindhouse type of a movie, um, and it's really a lot of fun. So, having recently rewatched it, uh, my recommendation would be if you have never seen Silent Rage, if you find any of this interesting at all, if you're a Chuck Norris fan, um, I think Silent Rage is is kind of almost required viewing at least one time just so you can say that you've seen it. But like I said, back in the day, there was a period in time where Chuck Norris's highlight reels that they would show and they would talk about Chuck Norris and his importance in you know movies and martial arts. The two things they would show would be his fight with Bruce Lee and the bar scene from Silent Rage. Um, so I would definitely say that if you're a Chuck Norris fan and you haven't seen this movie, you definitely need to see it. Um, I think a lot of people, in all honesty, after they watch it, I think they'll find um, an interesting appreciation kind of for this film. And to me, it feels like an unofficial, if, if you're a Walker, Texas Ranger fan, it kind of falls into that same sort of uh, milieu that also inhabits like Lone Wolf McQuaid. Lone Wolf McQuaid is still my favorite um, Chuck Norris film. Um, but um, the thing that's interesting about Silent Rage is if you've ever watched some of the Halloween movies and you see the cops and they show up and, and you know, the, the character just, you know, kills them or makes quick work of them and they don't seem to be much of a threat. Well, when you have a, a, a person like, you know, this sheriff that, uh, that uh, Chuck Norris plays, it doesn't always go down that way. So, which I thought is, uh, makes it a lot of fun. Um, it, it's, it's, it's just one of those kind of fun things because I've always wondered and, um, you know, what would happen if, you know, the Mike Myers, you know, invincible killer character had a run in with Batman. Well, th this is probably the closest we're ever going to get to see on screen <laughs> in this kind of idea because Chuck Norris is his own sort of like mythical now like superhero, <laughs> for lack of a better way to put it. 
So it's just a lot of fun because I, I think that's the way I would sum this up is that if you've ever wondered what would happen if Chuck Norris fought Mike Myers, it's, it's that almost like, what was that movie they did? It was uh, Freddy Krueger versus Jason. You know, it's right. that kind of idea, except you have a very obvious heroic character versus an obvious, you know, villainous, you know, murderous, you know, slasher killer character. So, um, but I definitely recommend it for people who have never seen it. Uh, check out Silent Rage on Tubi. Yeah, it's really interesting because, you know, as I was watching this, I was thinking about how one of the deficiencies of a lot of the Marvel films, in my opinion, is that they don't do a good job with the villains. I think uh, Loki and Thanos are the notable exceptions, but a lot of the villains are very interchangeable in the MCU and are not done very well, in my personal opinion. And I'm not the only person that feels that way. And I think to some extent, uh, DC struggles with that uh, as well. Like, how many times do we need to see Zod uh, fight Superman? That's what that's what I think. It's like they can't seem to to do very good with the villains sometimes. And of course, horror films are the exact opposite. Horror films, it's all about the villain. The monster is the star. That's why it's called Frankenstein. Why it's called Dracula, or it's called the the Wolfman, because the monsters are always the star in horror films. And, and this is one of those very unique uh, horror films that in a lot of ways fits in very well with the current, uh, you know, comic book type movies and that you actually have kind of a superhero fighting a monster. It's actually a great idea and something that you could probably do a lot more with where you combine, you know, a, a real, you know, a good villain uh, with a really awesome hero. And I think a lot of times Hollywood doesn't get that formula very well. Uh, these days, but I think in in this uh, circumstance, they did it, and it actually works. And uh, I would love to see a sequel to this film, actually, because it, there is room for a sequel. And I think it would be great to see Chuck Norris back in the saddle again, so to speak. Maybe even with a uh, a new young deputy or something like that to kind of take over the mantle, uh, because I think there's a lot of potential for that. Well, and it's interesting too because. Um... I, I'm I'm pretty sure that you had the same flashback I had because th this film ends on a moment that's reminiscent of the end of another film <laughs> that very clearly was intended to have a follow-up. Right. Um, so yeah, no, there, there's definitely room where if someone wanted that they could actually pick up, you know, where the silent rage ends and actually, you know, carry it over um, into a another story. Um, but along those lines, too, I, I think that there's this idea. Um, and it's interesting, too, because there was a point in which, you know, the martial arts heroes were our kind of superheroes of the day. When you talk about Seagal and Van Damme, um, you know, and Chuck Norris, I mean, the, they were very much that idea. And sometimes I lament and and think that it's unfortunate that we the the martial arts film as a genre has kind of fallen out of uh, favor with people um, to the point that, for example, I was talking to someone actually earlier today and I was talking about um, Donnie, uh, Donnie Yen and um, I, the person wasn't sure who I was talking about. It's like, well, I know you've seen movies that had Donnie Yen in them. And then I had to do the whole, you know, I am one with the force. The force is with me from uh, Rogue One. He went, oh, I know who that guy is. Um, because the the Ip Man series that Donnie Yen is in, which they've made four of those movies, are absolutely fantastic. They're really great martial arts movies. And um, uh, actually, my brother was telling me um, that I need to check out, I guess they did a, a remake of a Sudden Impact, the Van Damme film, but with Michael Jai White in it. Um, and Michael Jai White is one of those uh, martial arts movie actors who I love seeing in anything. Um, so it just, it's weird because there used to be that time when these personas, uh, these martial arts movie actors, that they seemed um, larger than life, you know, like Captain America, you know, like Iron Man or whoever, right? And I just think it, I think it's just kind of sad that uh, we've gotten kind of away from that a little bit because I I miss the the emergence of the the um, martial arts movie actor as is sort of like a, a thing because um, I feel like that for example like Scott Atkins I, I still would have loved to have seen Scott Atkins um, actually be 
the new Batman. Like I, Ben Affleck did a great job, and I'm excited to see him come back. But I, I really would have loved to have seen Scott Atkins actually maybe be the new Batman. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, James was taken off, so he said night, guys. James, thanks for checking out the show, and thanks for commenting. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, James. Um, we're probably going to be wrapping up here soon. Do you have anything else that you want to add, Eric, in regards to uh, Silent Rage? No, I mean, it's just, I think it's a really good film. Uh, obviously, again, I want to reiterate that the, the big reason that we're reviewing this is that we did want to try to do some, like, horror stuff. Uh, some stuff that's, you know, appropriate for uh, this time of year. Uh, we don't do a lot of horror on this show. Uh, so this is kind of our, our opportunity to do it. Um, we do have a window, by the way, for next week's show as far as we haven't planned it yet. Uh, we have the rest of the month planned because we're going to be doing uh, the Unsolved Mysteries revival uh, show because they're going to be coming out with their second half of the season uh, mid-October. So we're going to be doing the last two episodes of October uh basically taking some mysteries from unsolved mysteries uh, but we don't necessarily have something set for next week's show so if you have suggestions uh, please let us know especially something that might be interesting as far as something that would fit into the month of october and something that's maybe horror you know related or a good thriller or something like that and in particular if it's available on a lot of streaming platforms or some of the you know some of the bigger ones like netflix disney plus or one of the free ones like crackle Tubi, uh pluto tv um, even Peacock. Peacock obviously has a, has a lot, a lot of free content. So uh, just kind of putting that out there uh, because, like I said, this is one of those uh, films that I think is kind of kind of was fun for me because I don't typically like horror movies. It's just not something that I I gravitate towards. And I actually really enjoyed watching this. I thought it was really kind of fun. And uh, I think it's uh, kind of the closest you're going to get to what Dave said, which is like, you know, seeing uh, Chuck Norris take on Michael Myers or even like you said, like Batman taking on M Michael Myers. Uh, Batman actually, I think, has a, a really good rogues gallery compared to most of the other characters and has been depicted well on screen. But man, a lot of these superheroes, their rogues gallery is depicted pretty badly on screen and, and the villains are just completely forgettable. And uh, the villain in this one is is pretty terrifying you know what i mean it just taken on his face and it, it, it's a it's a it's a neat it's a neat film very cool